My name is Mark Holfe. I'm a Canadian immigration lawyer, ex-immigration officer, and high school teacher. I've been involved with immigration for over 13 years. I've represented clients from all over the world. I've, I've been asked to be a speaker and I've spoken at events on immigration across the country. Speaker, presenter, I run workshops and uh, Often I get calls from the news to comment on various immigration policy developments. Of late, one of the, uh, the, the more common calls I get is related to express entry. Now, what is express entry? Some of you may be asking. It's a new system that Canada uses to manage the intake of permanent residents to the country. It's designed to streamline the process of permanent residents, but I'll be honest with you. It may be streamlining to some extent, but for many people, at least to date, it's become and has been a real nightmare for people. Many people who have planned their whole lives out based on the rules for obtaining permanent residence are now completely left out of, of, of the process. So they've gone through the process of, of, of trying to come to Canada to work, excuse me, to work, to, to study, with the expectation that they're going to be able to apply for permanent residence. And because of express entry, really, without any warning, their hopes of coming to Canada have been dashed. Now, there's been other people who have received invitations to apply for permanent residence through the express entry system, but find their applications are refused for the smallest inconsequential reasons. In many cases, the, ref the refusals may even be wrong. And it's been attributed more to the computer system, the, the online portal that the government uses, and not so much that the person themselves has done anything wrong. But with Citizenship and Immigration Canada's one-touch policy, it results in applications being refused and people ultimately losing out on their dream of becoming a permanent resident. So since January, when Express Entry was released, I, at our office here in Lethbridge, have had many people come to seek advice and help um, when they've had problems with ultimately achieving permanent resident status. But more often than not, when people come to me at the very last stage, there's not a dang thing that I can do about it. Often they will have waited too long and now there's no option left but to go home. Now, I don't give free consultations. At least that's what I advertise. And when people come, they pay for my time. But when I have to sit at this desk and tell someone on the other side that their hopes of coming to Canada have been dashed and that there's no option but to get on the plane and go home, it's pretty hard for me to charge them a consult fee. But the reality is, I just I can't stomach charging people when I'm not actually able to help them. So something had to change. You know, I, I think to myself, why didn't they come to me sooner? Why did they wait so long until the last moment to then come? Obviously, I would have been able to help them if they'd come earlier. Well, after giving it a lot of thought, I think the reality is, is pretty clear. My legal fees were simply more than they thought that they could afford in the beginning. Now, at the end of the stage, when there are no other options and the choice is getting on a plane and going home or paying $375 or $400 an hour to speak to a lawyer, that $400 becomes a whole lot more affordable. But for my purposes, it's often at a stage when there's nothing that I can do. So these people who chose not to come to me very frequently relied on other sources of information. They would rely on dabbling lawyers, which, you know, I'll, I'll try to be fair, but dabbling lawyers are lawyers who practice in five or six or seven different areas of the law and, and do not really focus on one. And so they don't really know as much as they probably should about immigration, but figure that because they're a lawyer, they can practice in the area. So we have those people that they rely on. Then there's other what I call lightweight consultants, essentially consultants who really offer no more assistance than filling in a form, who don't help people with their long-term planning. They're solely focused on filling out a form and submitting an application that their client asked them to do without actually thinking about the long-term consequences. And then there's the final group of people who just try to do it themselves with whatever free resources they can find on their internet. 
They go to immigration forums. They join Facebook groups. They rely on advice from good friends and even others who have gone before them and done the process themselves. Well, those are great resources. Don't get me wrong. And I also don't mean to slag all the lawyers and consultants out there too because I am not perfect and I definitely make mistakes myself. But the reality is these people who have relied on these resources often don't know who they can trust. And when it comes to the free information that's on the internet, the old adage, you get what you pay for, holds true. You don't know if that information is still current or if maybe the law has changed and because of that, if you follow the same process your friend did, you could result in, it could result in a completely different, a different uh, consequence. So with all of this being said, and all of these people coming to me for help, and me not being able to do a dang thing about it, something had to change. And so, after doing a lot of research, I decided to create the Canadian Immigration Podcast with its associated website, CanadianImmigrationPodcast.com. I love doing it. It's a weekly podcast full of practical information uh, that people can actually use. It's not just to show people how much I know and how smart I am. The reality is it's there to give practical tips and insight that can actually help people to move forward with their immigration applications. It also contains lots of articles that attempt to demystify this convoluted immigration process and uh, many aspects of immigration, well, honestly, that lawyers and consultants typically charge for. So you can go to my website right now and check out the resources that are there. And I'm very proud of those resources. But often, lawyers are going to charge you for that information that I'm giving away free. So why did I do this? Well, the reality is, I was just tired of seeing people come to me, like I said before, and not being able to do anything because they couldn't afford my fees. So at the very least, I feel like I'm actually doing something to help people. You know, people are able to, you know, to contact me through my office and set up consults and pay the fee, but ultimately, when they come to me and I'm not able to help them, it's, it's really not the best use of my time. So I created the Canadian Immigration Podcast to provide the answers that these people are looking for. And the reality is, if one person comes to me asking a question that I, you know, that I'm answering for them, there's a very, very high chance that there's going to be 50 or 100 or 1,000 people needing that same information. And if it's just one little question, why not broadcast it to the world on a podcast where everybody can access it freely? I get the good feeling of feeling I'm, like I'm actually helping people, but I don't have to take the 30 minutes or 45 minutes every day to just give that information to one person and then basically do the consult for free. So this makes all the sense in the world. I can amplify my message. And that's what gets me excited about this whole process. Being able to genuinely help people. Now, after seeing the wonderful success that I've had on my, on my Canadian Immigration Podcast, we've had over 2,000 likes on Facebook. We crossed over that, that barrier a couple weeks ago. And it's only been in existence for about a month and a half. I've, I've got almost 2,500 people on our, our list serve. Um, on, our, on our immigration mailing list, I should say, um, that are interested in the information that I'm providing. So, I decided to take it to the next level. For years, I've been giving presentations, speaking at immigration conferences all across the country. I've been a guest lecturer in colleges and universities. I've even taught courses to other lawyers and consultants on the practice of immigration law. But in every case, I'm only able to reach a handful of people at a time. So why not amplify the message? Why spend a day in a live format teaching a handful of people what I can actually do on a grand scale through a webinar, through the internet, through all of these other wonderful tools that allow me to amplify my message? So, like I said, the small little conferences and presentations I love doing, but it's simply wasn't good enough for me. So in order to help more people, I've decided to host a free webinar on Express Entry. Now this webinar is going to be awesome. It's going to cover a ton of different things. And remember, it's free. It's not going to cost you a thing. Now why am I doing this? It all fits into the same premise. 
if there are people out there that I can help, I'm going to do it. And if I can spend two hours on a webinar and help 10,000 people, then fantastic. I actually feel like I'm making a difference in the world and I'm not just a money-grubbing lawyer looking to get rich on the back of clients. So aside from that, I don't want to get carried away on that tangent. What's in the webinar? Well, to start off with, I'm going to explain what Express Entry is. I think it's important people understand why it was created, where it came from. And when I was on the Canadian Bar Association, the national executive, I had an opportunity to, to provide submissions and to provide information, at least understand where the program was going before it was even released to the government in, in, in Ottawa. Now, we've just had an election change here, so we're not sure exactly how that's going to impact things. But I'm going to give you a background history on Express Entry. Great. That doesn't help people, other than give them a little bit of background information. So, I'm going to give you some tips on navigating the Express Entry system, including that crazy nightmarish portal that we have to deal with, because everything is filed electronically now, and the thing can be a real pain. So I'm going to help you with some tips and strategies so you don't waste your time. I'm also going to provide you with my five most important things that you need to do before you even think of applying for Express Entry. Then I'm going to teach you a little bit about how to assess your own eligibility for the program, and another five tips or five reasons why people are deemed ineligible, at least my top five list. And understand that you can be found ineligible when really you qualify, but it's because of the way you've answered the questions when you're going through the, 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 the tutorial or the wizard, the assessment tool that the government has. It can be because you don't quite understand um, what the question is asking and you don't include the right information. But regardless, understand, I'm going to show you, at least to the greatest extent possible, uh, some of the things that trip people up so that you can avoid it. But finally, and, and this is probably the most important, not everybody who wants to immigrate to Canada is going to be able to do it through Express Entry. Some people are just going to be found ineligible. And I do not want to leave those people high and dry. Because there are some things that you can do to improve your chances of qualifying. Now, it might take a little bit of time to get there, but ultimately, there are some things that I can teach you to help prepare yourself so that maybe not today, but one day in the future, you'll be able to qualify too. So, if you're the kind of person who's right at this stage right now of looking uh, at filing your Express Entry profile, if you're, you're preparing all of the information and documentation, but you just don't know where to start, or maybe you've been one of those people that have already dove into it, spent a few hours, and have more questions than you have answers, um, this webinar is for you. But I'm also going to address all of those people out there who probably have the ability to figure it out, who have the time, possibly, if they wanted to use it to figure out the Express Entry System, but they've decided personally they just don't want to waste the time. So for those who would rather get information straight from the source without having to dissect the Citizenship and Immigration Canada website, spend hours and hours and maybe even days or weeks or months reading all of the free information sources on the internet, going to the immigration forums or these Facebook pages. If you want to avoid all of that, come to the webinar. Come join me. Like I said, it's free for everyone. So I want you to click on the button either below or above or, or register. I'm not even sure how we're going to set it up. But just on this site, there'll be a place to register. Do it. I'm super excited to see you there and to have you participate in this webinar because it's going to be interactive. There's going to be opportunities for you to ask questions and for me to answer. And, and I'm super excited about it. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be the first time that I do it. I'm sure it won't go perfect, but I can guarantee you that the content is going to be fantastic. Oh, and I almost forgot, I also have something special that I'm going to be saving for everyone that joins me on the webinar. So register now. Thanks so much for watching this video. Take care.